Good morning, everyone. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. I have a message today in particular for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. I want to talk about uh, how we are entering a season now where things are going to change and some of the ways that they are going to change. And in particular about the manifestation of the Antichrist and what we can expect, those of us who are disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, the first thing I want to say is that for some time now, Jesuits have infiltrated every area of human life, every social structure. So religious structures, of course, government structures, uh, systems of education, and and any any part of society that is a, a group of people has been infiltrated by Jesuits. And one of their primary objectives, of course, was to to end Protestantism, which they have done, that has been accomplished, and as I have pointed out in previous videos, this was celebrated on Halloween, a high satanic holiday of this year, 2017, this end of the protest. And and so th that that's one thing that, that was on their agenda, but it's not that alone. Another thing that they have done is to cultivate hatred and division in various parts of Christianity in particular. And because this is a Christian channel, I'm primarily addressing this from the perspective of Christianity. Now, there's a, a few things that are important to, to know about how these people have operated. After World War II, a lot of people are aware that Nazi scientists were brought to the United States under something called Operation Paperclip. And this, of course, was to, what most people are aware of, is to bring scientists into our space program. But it was not limited to this. And a major part of the scientists that were brought over into the United States after World War II were Nazi doctors and Nazi psychiatrists. And why this is important is because we have currently in the United States of America right now a system of control and mind control in particular that has been implemented because of these men who came over into the United States and introduced some things that weren't here before that, or not at least not to the same degree. Uh, one of the, those, the most obvious ones, is the fluoridation of the water supply in order to get the the populace to be compliant. Another effect of fluoride in water is it <clears throat> it affects the brain in a way where a person a person is less likely to be spiritually inclined and, and of course to debase the population as well as to subjugate the population is the agenda behind this flu water fluoridation and it's also behind the GMO foods, the use of, of various toxins and pesticides to, to sicken the public, but also to make them mentally less capable. Similarly, in the education system, that techniques were brought in, teaching methods were brought in that were used to to make people less able to think and there have been this has been a massive assault on the american people that they were not aware of and it has gone on for many many years and most of us 
if not all of us who are alive today, were born into this system. I know that I was. So psychology, psychiatry, and the medical system is actually a huge part of how people have been brainwashed and also how it's part of the control system, how people are controlled. And I'll just give you an example of that. When your children go to school, they are given a mental health evaluation and and then they they will advise that many children be given things like Ritalin or antidepressants and so forth. And if the parents object to this, the children often usually are removed if the parents do not go along with this. And and so this is a system of control, but both in terms of coercing people to take these drugs, but also in terms of mind control. These Nazi scientists were also the authors of what some know as the MK Ultra program. And basically this stands for mind control in German. Control is spelled with a K. So MK Ultra was about developing mind control techniques that were not only used against some specific people to create uh, people who would be agents for these conspirators, whether they be people who carried information, whether people were sex slaves, whatever. It wasn't only that. It was about MK Ultra, about mind controlling the public as a whole. So this is not something that is isolated to certain groups. It has been implemented primarily through the school system and the media. Uh, there are various ways that this has been done. I'm not going into a lot of detail about that. But for example, just the way that television has been used, the screens themselves put the, the brain into what is known as an alpha state, which is a suggestible uh, state of hypnosis so that what comes over the television or the computer is more easily accepted by the mind. And these kind of techniques are used throughout the world, but in particular in the United States of America. So another thing that the, the Jesuits did alongside all these other operations was to cultivate hatred and division particularly amongst Christians, to get them to, to revile one another, to, to accuse one another, and to religiously accuse one another, to weaponize scripture against one another. And this had a few different goals to it. One of them, of course, was to alienate anyone who wasn't a Christian and, and to the, the stunning hypocrisy and unchristlikeness of the, these behaviors offends the sensibility of of people who are not Christians, and it keeps them from knowing who Jesus Christ really is, and keeps them from salvation. But it also corrupts the people who call themselves Christians. Now, for a minute here, I, I do want to address hypocrisy. Because hypocrisy is not just about that. It's also about people who have been lured away from studying the Bible. And because they've been lured away from studying the Bible, they don't know what's in it. And their leaders are people who have been educated in colleges, universities, and seminaries by Jesuits to accept doctrines that come directly from the Roman Church and have nothing to do with the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Now, before I go any further here, I want us all to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. And please, I, I would really ask you not only now in this video, but when you're watching any video that is talking about the Word of God, if you have a King James Bible, get it out 
and pause the video if you need to and look up the scriptures and read the word alongside whoever is teaching and then jot down that passage and return to it later for further study and read it in context. So read the entire chapter and pray about it and ask for revelation because no human being should be between you and Jesus Christ. No one, not me, not anyone. That a true teacher from God will lead you to the scripture and lead you to have your own direct relationship with God. Okay? They will not allow you to exalt them or make them the vehicle through which you have a relationship. Okay? So, 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? So, this passage is about examining oneself to see if you are in the faith. And there is only really a couple of ways that one can do this. One is to read the Word of God and know what the Word of God says. And the other is to pray and ask the Father to reveal to you what you don't understand about Scripture and to approach Him humbly. And when we do this, you know, he will not refuse us. Anyone who, who requests understanding of God's word humbly and sincerely, if, they, if they're seeking that and seeking the Father's face, then they will receive it. And you don't need a priest or a pastor or an online teacher to reveal to you the truth of Scripture. You can find it for yourself in this way. And that's what I would urge you to do. Because if you don't do that, you will be very, very likely to be misled. So I was, I wanted to start with this scripture here because so many people have been brought under mind control and they don't know it. And they get offended when someone tells them the truth of what scripture is. And they will either just shut that person out and not listen to them or they will attack them. Now, part of why Jesuits cultivated the spirit of bickering and arguing and dissension and personal attacks within the, the so-called Christian community, and, and I, I know it offends people to say so-called, but really, when you look at these people, there's nothing about them that resembles Jesus Christ. And that's really how you can identify a Christian, is whether or not they resemble Jesus Christ, because a true Christian has taken up their cross and follows Jesus Christ. And you can't do that without becoming like him. Okay, So someone who is living in, in adultery, someone who is living in addiction, someone who is bitter and angry and hostile and, and viciously attacking the brethren and accusing the brethren is not behaving like Jesus Christ. And so they, they are not Christian. Okay. So part of the reason for cultivating this was so that, first of all, people who are not believers would find Christianity offensive but also then to introduce a person who would bring peace. Now I'm coming to the topic of Antichrist. We do know that there have been many Antichrists in the world. There is not only one. But in the last days there will be a final Antichrist. So let's go to Second Thessalonians and chapter 2. And verse 3, we read here, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So 
we do know that a falling away will come first and then the the man of sin will be revealed the son of perdition now let's turn to the book of john chapter 17 and verse 12 and this is jesus christ speaking here he says while I was with them in the world, I kept them in my in thy name. He's in prayer right now to the Father. It's part of a prayer here. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Here Jesus Christ is referring, referring to Judas as the man of perdition or the son of perdition. The same exact language that is used in Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three, describing the Antichrist. So from that, we can come to understand some of the characteristics that we will see in the son of perdition or the Antichrist. One of them, of course, will be betrayal, and. Betrayal implies that it comes from one's circle, one's, one's social circle. Jesus was betrayed by one of the twelve, and the son of perdition, being like Judas, will probably manifest as having a spirit of betrayal. Now, historically, this has operated in the Roman church many times, and also politically in other cultures. For example, in Stalinist Russia and in communist China and other communist countries, what happens when the state educates the children is they have the minds of the children. And the children then are used as spies for what happens in the family. And the children then can get rewarded if they accuse family members of not being in compliance with the government. So this technique has been used in Marxist communist countries, but it was also used in Nazi Germany, which of course was also a socialist country. So this kind of government control, when they get the children into the care of the state, this is part of why. And so now let's turn to the book of Matthew, pardon me, chapter 10 and verse 36. So Matthew chapter 10 and verse 36. And Jesus, Jesus Christ here is speaking. And actually we'll start with verse 35 or verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth, I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. So here G Jesus was prophesying to us and telling us how things would be in, often for Christians, and I do have to say that these things have manifested in the past hundred years or so, more so than before, where we have government authorities educating children and, and influencing culture so that often what government will do is give financial incentives for someone who betrays another. So accusations made against family members was a tool that was used not only by Stalinist Russia, but it was used by the Nazis as well. So Nazi psychiatrists that came to the United States of America after World War II brought with them the practice of water fluoridation and the system of drugging people as a way of treating mental illness. They also used their techniques in the school system and in various social structures. It's used online. Various techniques are used to 
influence and control people's behavior online and also through various methods of propaganda, whether it be Hollywood or the music industry. But I'm not going into a lot of detail about that, but I did want to point out how it's a, a major influence in controlling people's behavior. And right now, these things are going to start playing out in a different way. Narcissism is something that has been cultivated in the population and in the school system in particular, where psychologists said that there was a lack of good self-esteem in children and that this influenced outcomes in a negative way and that what the education system needed to do was to foster something called self-esteem in the students. And of course, this self-esteem has to do with feeling good about yourself no, no matter what your achievement level is. And the idea that everyone should be applauded and included and, and honored no matter what their behavior is. And of course, this is extremely destructive and it creates a generation of narcissism, of narcissists. So you have people who now are in colleges and universities and even older who have had narcissism cultivated in them. And it wasn't only done by the self esteem movement, it was also done in the drugging of people, which also makes people narcissistic. But narcissism is a condition where someone can't self-examine and, and they feel they have created a false face and they defend that false face. Anyone who might call attention to something that they're wrong about is attacked. The reason why this narcissism has been cultivated in people, though, is not simply to, to make a bunch of selfish, hypocritical people. It's also done to make people so that they can't hear challenging ideas that might help them. And, and so when a person has been taught to feel good about themselves no matter what they do. And if someone calls attention to something that might need correction in their thinking, that that person is then attacked. That this is something that the Jesuits deliberately cultivated for this time, for right now, what's happening. And of course, if you've been following my channel, you do know that the Pope of Rome and, and, and the, the Protestant churches have all united together again. Uh, the Pope of Rome is now over all of Protestantism. There is no more protest according to the Catholics and the, the Reformation was celebrated as being over on the satanic high holiday of Halloween, October 31st of 2017. That would be this year. So now what we have is a global one world religion pretty much coalesced. And the next move is to have state authority. So I did a video about this as well where uh, the state authority is, is pretty much in union with this global church and this power is coalescing underneath the Roman Church. So the cultivation of hatred, hateful practices, and division in Christianity, in the churches, has been done for a reason. I want to just pause that thought for a moment here and now just call your attention to to the false doctrine of the Roman Church. and. I hope that people will be able to at least do some research about this. I'm not accept, asking anyone to accept what I say because I say it, but rather study this out and particularly 
study it out here. Study it out here in the Holy Word of God, the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Because anywhere else you go, that it must be cleared through God's Word, right? Anything else you hear, if it doesn't line up with God's Word, then it's false and should not be listened to. So the Roman Church has introduced a number of concepts that are contrary to the doctrine that is taught in the Holy Bible. And one is the definition of God as a trinity. And this does this has nothing to do with the scripture. And there is only one God, and that is the Father. And I'm going to give you one scripture here, but there are many scriptures that say this. But this is the words of Jesus Christ himself and in prayer here to the Father. So John chapter 17, verse 3. He's praying to his Father here. He says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. That Jesus Christ himself said that the Father is the only true God. I have other videos about this on my channel and I can also if you email me I can I can point you to specific ones and I can also I will also in the description box below uh, attach a link to a brother who teaches the truth of scripture far better than I do if you have more questions but feel free to email me and I will help you with this but for, for the point of this video I'm not going to go over that here but the doctrine of the Trinity is a Babylonian doctrine, and it originated in Babylon. And there are many problems with that, particularly that you're not worshiping the one true God, and you are, you are worshiping a different Jesus, okay? And so your eternal life is in peril. And I'm not asking you to agree with me. I'm asking you to study it out. And to, I'm challenging you to examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Okay? Um, another false doctrine of the Roman Church is the practice of various holidays. And the one that's coming up right now that's the most important one, really, is Christmas. Because Christmas is Saturnalia. It's about the per birthday of Tammuz. Who, who was the, the reincarnated sun god of Babylon. Okay. And that's what December 25th is. We are not commanded in scripture or instructed in scripture to, to celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ. And were we to do so, December 25th would not be his birthday. This is the birthday of the infant Tammuz who who is seen in goddess worship. So in the Babylonian religion, Nimrod had a wife, Semiramis, and when Nimrod was killed, she, she deified herself. And when she became pregnant, she said that it was the reincarnated sun god, or Nimrod, and she ruled that way through her son. And there are multiple pagan images of the mother-child goddess holding the baby from cultures throughout, ancient cultures throughout the world. And this is not Christianity, and it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And how it manifests in the Roman Church is in the deification of Mary and calling her the mother of God. So I really suggest that people look look into the Christmas because you cannot be worshiping to moves and get into the kingdom. And I know what the answers are of the brainwashed people, which is, well, God knows my heart and he knows that I'm worshiping Jesus when I am celebrating Saturnalia because I call it Christmas. And it's that this is just this is an abomination before God. And there was a time, maybe 50 years ago, where most people didn't know this. And they were innocent. But the information is now widely 
been brought to bear that most people have had had it said to them spoken to them that saturnalia is what christmas is and it has nothing to do with the birth of jesus christ and another excuse they make is why when i give presents to people i'm honoring the gift of salvation the gift of jesus christ to the world and and i'm, I'm doing what the three wise men did and that's biblical and when i put a star on my christmas tree which something by the way is forbidden in scripture the christmas tree uh I, i'm not i'm putting the star that was about baby jesus that the wise men saw and not the star of ishtar but it is the star of ishtar and the christmas tree is a pagan practice and december 25th is the birth of tammuz the reincarnated so-called reincarnated sun god of semiramis and this has to do with goddess worship okay and if this offends you that I, i'm telling you this then i suggest that you examine yourself and you get on your knees and you ask the father what the truth is and you get in the scripture and you read what the truth is now finally the antichrist manifesting as a kind of judas will be the spirit of betrayal so when when we consider in matthew and we'll go there again in matthew chapter 10 and verse 36 For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. That one of the techniques of, of the, this kind of control system is to get family members to turn on one another. And we as, as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ need to be, we need to be prepared about this because sometimes this will happen to us and and as jesus went through it we we need to remember that a, a servant is not above his master and if it happened to him it can happen to us now nothing is required of us that that god will not give us the the power to walk through as long as we're staying near to him if we're in the word every day and in prayer every day and and as much as possible sharing our testimony with people so that as many as possible can be saved because the hour is late but things aren't over yet and there are still people coming to know who jesus christ really is and people coming to salvation every day not tons of people, but there's still people coming. And, and so there is still work to be done. And those of us who do know Jesus Christ, that we have to remember that the enemy wants to manipulate us into speaking in such a way as to call, so that the world will look upon Christians and say that they want nothing to do with such people. It's important always to have a heart for for of love for for the people that we're ministering to, even when they revile us, even when they even try to kill us, even if they do kill us. I have reviewed in previous videos the story of Stephen in the Book of Acts, but let's go there, just so we can read this together because it, it's really just so it's it's really beautiful in a way the way that Stephen went through this because he was falsely accused and then he gave his testimony and then they went to stone him and there was nothing about him that deserved this it was utterly false and his testimony was pure and and then in verse 59 and 58 of chapter 7 of the book of Acts we read and they stoned Stephen 
calling upon God. So Stephen was calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he said, had said this, he fell asleep. So he was praying for the people who were murdering him. And those who know this story know that there was a young man though there watching the coats of the people who were stoning Stephen, and that was Saul, who later became the Apostle Paul and a minister to the Gentiles. The, the Apostle called to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. So we know that this prayer was answered. And But when he, he prayed this prayer, that these people not be held responsible before God for the sin, that then he fell asleep. And I, I would suggest to you that that whatever suffering he went through physically in that moment was brief and it ended quickly. And we who who now are facing the global religion having state authority, we we do know that this state authority will come against those who are deemed its enemies. And that will be fundamentalist, Bible believing Christians who believe in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Pope Francis has said publicly that fundamentalist people who believe in the scripture as it is written literally are dangerous spiritual racists. He has also said that people who think it is necessary to have a direct relationship with God are also dangerous. What we're seeing forming here is that people in the world have been made to think that Christians are hateful and divisive and hypocritical. And this will be used to get people to hate us, even though we're not the Christians who, that, you know, we're not false Christians. We're not like that. And also, propaganda will, will be used to make us look mentally ill, to make us look like terrorists, people who need to be imprisoned, and, and ultimately, some of us put to death. And that was the reason why I wanted to do this video, was, was to recognize that hate has been deliberately cultivated and will be mobilized against the body of Christ. And that if we do not have the spirit of religious compromise, if we stand for the truth, we will be hated of all nations for his name's sake, as Jesus told us we would be. And that they would think they were doing God's service by killing us. This is something to prepare our hearts for, remembering that Jesus promised that that He would give us the power to endure anything that that was set before us to do. That He doesn't ask us to do things without giving us the power to do so. However, it's important for people to prepare their hearts, especially for the betrayal, especially for the betrayal. Anyone who's dealt with, with a narcissist knows that they get close to you. They get close to you. They know who you are. And, and, and that kind of betrayal is a manifestation of human evil. When someone comes to you as a brother or a sister, or a family member or a friend and and they betray you that that is very very painful but our Lord Jesus Christ went through it and and we may have to walk through it too so it's important to know that and to be in prayer to the Father about it that that we be strengthened in our hearts and in our minds that we love Jesus more than anything that that you know, the commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy, thy soul, and thy might, right? That that's the first commandment. 
and then to love our neighbor as ourself. And if we go back to Matthew and chapter 10 again. And in verse 31, we'll read, Fear not, therefore, ye are more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I also, him, pardon me, I'm going to read this again. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I am not, I came not to send peace, but a sword. And of course, that sword is this. The word of God is the sword of Jesus Christ. He's not talking about killing people. He's talking about standing for the truth. And when we do this with our testimony, when we tell people what Jesus Christ has done for us, and we offer them the truth of Scripture, that, that this will be rewarded in heaven. It's the only way. And it's, it's never been popular to do so. Jesus was crucified, and he taught that the way to life was narrow, and few would find it, but there, there was a broad path that leadeth to destruction. The great falling away is the false doctrines of the Roman church. That's what it is. That's the falling away. It's not people who claim to be Christians turning to, to open Satanism or something. It's turning to false ideas about who Jesus is, which is, sadly, worshiping Satan. And I, I know that many, many people will be offended by this, but there are yet a few who won't be. And so my prayer is that as many as you who hear this, who are convicted in your heart, who are curious about this, that you search out the scripture and you, you seek the teacher that I have listed in this description box below, or you feel free to email me and find out what the truth of scripture is. That, that you might have eternal life.